Good morning, evening, afternoon, middle of the night, whatever time it is and wherever you are, welcome to the evolving story of our Arctic and uh, the ongoing changes and impacts that every, every human on this planet will face. So two videos ago, I argued that the Arctic sea ice, oh, by the way, um, you know who I am and you know where I am and what I'm affiliated with if you've watched any of my other videos, so I'll just skip that part. So a few, video, a few videos ago, I argued that we're gonna lose Arctic sea ice in the summer for the first time in a blue ocean event by 2020 or earlier. In the last video, I contemplated what would happen to the sea ice after that event in subsequent years. And the scenario that I'm leaning towards thinking will happen is that we'll just continue to lose the sea ice for longer and longer durations until it's gone year round within about a decade. Other people argue mostly that the radiative losses from much warmer Arctic will be super high as soon as the sun goes down for those six months of darkness in the Arctic and the sea ice will reform during that period. That would lead to a scenario where there's sea ice in the winter months and no sea ice in the summer months. So let's have a look at some of the rationale between some of these arguments, these other views that the sea ice will all, will always have sea ice in the Arctic at some point in the year. Um, and uh, yeah, let's see what there is in, in the literature. And there's very little, very little modeling's done on this. And this is becoming more and more urgent, obviously. So Google uh, Wipneus, W-I-P-N-E-U-S, and it takes you to here, or just type in this name and Google this, you find this image. This is up-to-date images of uh, showing the sea ice thick volume decreasing here. If you fit an exponential curve to it, summer of 2021, um, with bands here, two sigma bands, deviation or variability bands, 95% confidence that, that we'll be in between those curves from this variation here, fluctuation. If you change your fit, instead of fitting an exponential to the whole data, you fit it to more recent, subsequently more recent data. This, so this is showing that the curve is actually falling steeper than exponential here. And then you get a spread of, data, of, of values. So I'm arguing 2020 or before for loss of sea ice um, volume going to zero. This green curve at the bottom is the black curve. So it's for September. Bracketing it here, we have August and October month. So I'm arguing that when this hits zero, these will be dragged to zero quickly. Now, of course, there is an argument that when the first curve goes to zero in September, everything changes and the trajectories of these curves may change. So there, there is an argument and I'll have a look at that. So one of the things that is key is our planet is changing completely. Okay, the temperature difference with latitude is greatly decreasing. So this is, look at all this water. This is total precipitable water moving up from the equator towards the poles. And look what's happening right now over large parts of the US and Canada. It's just, we're being fire hosed, okay? Precipitation, we had over an inch of water at Fort, in Ottawa, which is 45 degrees north latitude. Uh, yesterday. We had over an inch of water today. We're having an, over an inch tomorrow for Canada Day ceremonies. Look at the water moving up here. So as the jet streams become wavier, we're getting water going up to much farther distances. The jet streams are actually going up to as far as the North Pole from time to time, bringing water vapor and heat up there. So we're getting a tropicalization of the Northern Hemisphere as a result of the jet streams first getting slower and wavier and then ultimately they're heading to collapse, breaking the wall, allowing water vapor to head right up into the Arctic, keeping it warm there year round is one of the arguments I'm making. This is a so-called death spiral. This is September is the black line 
Everything's circling closer and closer to zero. When the black line September goes to zero, no sea ice volume. And then that pulls a few other months down. And this is, we're gonna, I'm gonna looking at some different views on what else hap can possibly happen. So here we go. If you Google Google Scholar, go on Google Scholar, so it gets, just gets peer reviewed published results. Um, I also put since 2017, just to get the most recent stuff. And I get a bunch of different papers here, um, some of which I'll look at. The most interesting is after the ice goes, have a look at that. I'm not sure if it's behind a paywall or open, um, but I'll be discussing it here. So first of all, this paper here, influence of high latitude atmospheric circulation changes on summertime Arctic sea ice. So it's always good just to look at the abstract here. So the Arctic, you know, rapid sea ice decline in the Arctic for three decades, warming at twice the global rate, the relationship between warming and sea ice loss, not well understood. Well, really, not well understood. I mean, it gets warmer, you lose sea ice. But anyway, that seems to be understood. But anyway, um, talks about the different circulation patterns and some modeling and different trends and things going on. Often, it's good just to look at the figures. Uh, so let's go down and see some of the figures. So things like this, this is 1980 to now. This is the sea ice loss is the blue line. We've got the specific humidity rising, getting a lot more water evaporation in the Arctic, a lot more water carried up into the Arctic, bringing latent and sensible heat. So the humidity is rising. The temperature is rising. Long wave radiation going out to space is also rising because the Arctic is warmer and in the winter it will radiate more heat out to space. Okay, so we get different curves like that. Um, I'm not gonna go into all of the details here. Um, what does the conclusion say, if I can see? So it does a lot of modeling. There's a lot of technical stuff here using GCMs and stuff like that. Okay, so we read the abstract and we looked at some figures. So that's the gist of the paper. This guy here is a stochastic dynamical model. So how the Arctic sea ice is changing. Theoretical physics guys, math guys, um, Cambridge and Yale. So, you know, look at the abstract. There's noise in the system. There's a lot of variability. Okay, as the system is about to change a state, then there can be a critical slowing down of frequencies leading to larger excursions in both directions, so more variability. And uh, they're trying to look at this from a mathematical point of view, and they're comparing it to different examples in stochastic uh, dynamics. So noise is multiplied, and you get um, think various things happening. I don't want to dwell on that paper. This is a poster that was at a conference, and there's a couple interesting things in here, impacts of climate change, sea ice loss. One of the things is relative to pre-industrial, you know, these are some temperatures. We've gained, gained a degree since 1890. Uh, in, the, in the Eemian, when we were a degree higher, the sea levels were six to nine meters higher than they are today. One to two degrees higher, 400,000 years ago at a strong interglacial, six to 13 meters higher. Three million years ago, Pliocene, um, much, much higher and two to three degrees warmer than today. This is an interesting image here. This is showing the, so the black is the sea ice um, percentage coming down, the sea ice dropping down. And the green is the total sky albedo. So from the sky, looking down on the Arctic, including the clouds and everything else, that's the albedo. So we're seeing a decline in albedo. This is the 52% down to 48% as measured by the Ceres satellite. And then we have the temperature anomaly is the uh, red line here going up. And, and this would be the temperature anomaly for the Arctic. Here we have clear sky albedo. So if there's no clouds, the blue is the albedo dropping due to the sea ice going. And when you take, incorporate the additional clouds, the sea ice is going, there's more evaporation, there's more cloud, you can see the total sky albedo uh, dropping, you know, because of the cloud effect. The cloud effect is the difference between the green and the, and the blue line. 
So we can see things like that there. Um, this is uh, variations in the albedo and the link to seasonality of sea ice. You know, so the Arctic's warming two to three times faster than the global average. There's modeling and stuff. Um, let's have a look um, at the crux of the, the, the best one I found on this. I want to spend a bit of time. So this is the Arctic, you know, a bit of ice, mostly snow, uh, mo mostly uh, water in between. Um, after the ice goes, researchers look into the Arctic's future for clues to save species and maybe even bring the ice back. So this is a fairly recent paper in Nature. So basically it's talking about the twilight zone in the space of a few months. The Arctic was very strange last year. After autumn, 20 degrees Celsius above normal temperatures, huge amounts of water vapor there. Um, the Arctic is quickly reshaped. They say it's the summers that have scientists worried. As early as 2030, wow, 2030, I'm arguing 2020, okay? So this is in nature. This is sort of a more a mainstream view. I'm always the outlier anomaly. That's fine. I don't mind being an anomaly. 2030, how do they get 2030 looking at the graphs? I could get my six-year-old kid to say, draw a line when this goes through zero. Actually, I don't have a six-year-old kid. This was a joke I used to use 10 years ago. I could get my 16-year-old kid, no longer a kid. Anyway, um, a blue Arctic ocean could amplify warming trends, scramble weather patterns. It's doing it, obviously. They should really quote me in all of this stuff. I've been talking about this stuff for five, you know, five, for seven years. Okay, other scientists need to, okay, so let's look at some of the key things in here. The blue period. Um, it's not this irreversible process. You could bring it back even if you lose it all. I mean, they're arguing that by cutting emissions, the Arctic could eventually come back. We'll lose sea ice. It'll be gone in the summers. It'll probably come back in the winter, be there in the winters and uh, and so on. Um, okay, so there's different models, but we know the models are all underperforming. So here's some of the things that's happening here. Because of circulation patterns, summer sea ice could survive in Greenland and Canadian Arctic after it disappears elsewhere. I don't think so, and I've explained in detail why in my last video. Um, you know, they talk about you know, ideas to bring the ice back. So they're starting to talk about global cooling and geoengineering, but many researchers hesitate to embrace it. Well, we'll see if they hesitate to come 2020, there'll be a mad scramble to uh, deploy solar radiation management and um, the three-legged bar stool that I'm talking about. Remember, I've been arguing forever that there's a climate change emergency. Um, so basically, they did some modeling here. They said that there's a threshold. So if you go above this threshold, then the sea ice is gone year round. So for example, they increased CO2 in the model from 280 to 1100 ppm, and they found that the ice, that would obliterate both winter and summer sea ice. Okay, then they reduced CO2 concentration so that when the, um, uh, so to, to see when it would return in the summer and winter and they did that sort of stuff But you know, I'm sure that there's all kinds of things that are missing in their models I think we can do a better job of trying to figure out what's going on They then talk about some ideas of global cooling in other words large-scale geoengineering like I say to cool the Arctic to return to a world with summer sea ice could have big perks such as Yeah, like saving humanity they don't say that, such as restoring some of the climate services that the Arctic provides and stabilizing weather patterns. Okay, uh, restoring a white Arctic could offer relief to polar bears, blah, blah, blah. Okay, uh, most researchers think the Arctic may have been nice, had ice-free summers during the last interglacial 130,000 years ago. Um, let's hope that it did, and let's hope that some of the methane on the Eastern Siberian and Arctic Shelf was released during that time period and contributed to the warming and is no longer there for warming to be released for us. Okay, um, regrowing sea ice. Yeah, so, so basically the gist of this paper is that at present C CO2 levels, the sea ice will be um, there in the summer and uh, gone in the summer and there in the winter. Thank you.